joining us on the back bench this morning. We've got uh, the member for West Swan, Rita Safiotti, and Liberal MP Peter Katzenbanis. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Good morning you guys, Tim. You guys have probably had to uh, be present at these citizenship ceremonies over the years. Have you ever seen anything like that? I haven't seen anything like that. But Would you like, like to? I'd like to. <laughs> it's like a lot of fun and a great way to celebrate becoming an Australian citizen. Absolutely. They're always fun events, but doesn't get that fun at Joondalup or Wanneroo <laughs> where I go, I've got to say, but I saw my colleague Simon O'Brien in that pick. He was obviously Getting having up and having a, a bit time. of a boogie, was he? So, um, good on Candice, I think it was, you said. Um, yeah. Good on her for celebrating in such a great she way to become was, Australian. She certainly was, yeah. Yeah. Nice to have a soundtrack there on standby for the moment too, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, let's get to some of the stories of the week. There was one in particular that just dragged on and on. It was intriguing at first and then it got a little bit farcical, frustrating, and in the end it's all very expensive, not to mention a little bit stinky as well. This is the story, of course, about the whale carcass that washed up on Scarborough Beach late on Sunday. It sat there rotting away until late Tuesday when it was finally picked up off the beach. It sat outside a tip up near Mindari. All night Tuesday was finally dumped on Wednesday morning. It was an epic saga. But look, the spectacle aside, uh, there's a $200,000 bill here yep. that the City of Stirling now has to look after. Presumably that will be passed on to ratepayers. Is that fair for the people of the City of Stirling to have to pay for that? Well, it's not fair and it's a bit of a crazy outcome. The state government knew this whale carcass was floating out in the ocean and basically should have acted earlier, just letting it float onto the shore making City of Stirling taxpayers have to foot the bill is a crazy outcome and also of course it also attracted a lot of sharks in mm. the water so it seemed a bizarre crazy outcome. The state government could have acted. Last year they said they were going to act if that situation occurred and the Federal Minister for Environment said they could have acted to drag the um, carcass out. All right, Peter. I'm not sure exactly what else could have been done. I've got to say the City of Stirling did a really good job. John Snook who's been out there all week and the Mayor Giovanni Italiano they cleaned up the carcass when it landed there. Not sure what else could have been done. We talk about dragging it out to mm. sea, but we know that the Lewin current could have an effect of bringing the carcass back into shore, and we couldn't have the risk of the whale carcass breaking up at sea and then becoming floating bits, bits of shark bait up and down our coast. So in the end, it landed on Stirling Council's beach. They're the management authority. They get funded for it. They did a good job cleaning it up. City of Joondalup had to do something similar 18 months ago. These are risks that don't happen too often. And I think um, in a difficult situation, all the authorities, especially of the City of Stirling, did a good job. OK. If you were a City of Stirling ratepayer, though, Peter, how would you feel about having to pay for that bill? Well, nobody wants to pay the bill, but they are the management authority and they receive funding so that they can manage the beach and manage the foreshore. And if the City of Stirling got any issues, obviously, they'll put their hand up. But they haven't. They've taken their job on board. And that's just the risk that you take, being an authority that is m responsible for managing that foreshore. We had a lot of comments on our Facebook sure. page asking the question, why wasn't it towed back out to sea? You mentioned the currents a moment ago. Is that not possible to just dispose of it or do something out at sea to prevent it from coming well, can the I shore. say, it's happened overseas where they've dragged the whale carcass out. I don't think it's beyond Western Australians to drag a whale carcass out. Mm. I mean, this is a government that's made mitigating sharks a big priority, yet they let a massive carcass, which is basically a shark buffet, land on one of Perth's popular beaches. I mean, it was a crazy outcome. They knew about it for days and they should have acted earlier. It's not beyond Western Australians to drag a whale carcass offshore. But right, if it so Peter, can work. I say, if another carcass turns up, and when we first saw it, that, that crazy guy jumping on it out, oh. not in this way. If you see Seriously. one of those again, if another one of those pops up this weekend, Will the same thing happen again? Are we going to treat it the same way? Are we going to let it come into shore again? Or has the state government got a different plan in mind it, for a future It depends event? where it is, Tim, because, again, imagine spending the money to drag it out past Rottnest, wasting all that money, and then the carcass coming back into town or maybe landing on multiple beaches as it breaks up, causing more of a risk. I think we're, um, we're between a rock and a hard place on this, and at the end of the day, having an entire carcass land on one beach is better than having bits of the carcass land all up and down our beaches. Right. They've done it overseas. I'm sure mm. they could do it in Western Australia. It was a, a hell of a smell anyway, yep. wasn't it? Yep. Let's get on to one of the other big stories of the week. The memorial for former Prime Minister Gough Whitlam, the Labor leader and legend of the party, who passed away at the age of 98. Now, we saw seven past and present Prime Ministers come together. It's a fairly rare thing to see that. So they were all there to pay their respects. But 
Two of them in particular were booed. Tony Abbott in particular given a hard time by sections of the crowd. John Howard also got some booing as well. We're going to take a quick look before we come to you guys. current Prime Minister Tony Abbott getting quite a rousing reception there when he arrived uh, at that Sydney Town Hall. Now, should we be condemning this sort of behaviour or is this just democracy in action? Well, um, look, it's, it was a great service and I just want to mention Noel Pearson's eulogy. It was something... Incredible. Incredible. Yep. It's yeah. agree incredible with that. for the times. And it will go down in history as one of the greatest speeches. Yep. Now, in relation to the booing, it's not something I would have done, but it's interesting that the same people that are criticising that booing were defending Colin Barnett attacking Gough Whitlam just a few hours after he died. So it's not something I would have done, but the same people attacking that booing are the people that were defending Colin Barnett who attacked the legacy of Gough Whitlam just a few hours after he had passed away. Peter? I thought it was disgraceful and a yeah. lack of class from those people who did the booing. Shouldn't detract from a state funeral, and hopefully it hasn't. I think it was rescued by Noel Pearson, as Rita said, with his wonderful speech. But those people showed a distinct lack of class and yeah, they, they, weren't, they weren't even respectful to the event that they attended. They turned it into a football match and a booing exercise when they were supposedly there to pay their own respects to a deceased Prime Minister, just like John Howard and Tony Abbott did. I think it reflects badly on those people. Let's not let it, though, engulf the service as a whole. Yeah, hopefully it will go down as uh, the moment where Noel Pearson, as you say, delivered yeah. an all great Australian yeah, It was fantastic, great. and I think it will. People are certainly now talking about that as one of the great speeches uh, in recent times. Yeah. Peter and Rita, appreciate you coming in this morning, Thank as you always. Very much. Thank we'll you. see you next Thank Friday. You. Have a good weekend.